Hello, everyone. My name is Adam Stout. I'm the senior sales engineer uh, for the Skywa Motion Division. Uh, we have responsibility for Indiana and Kentucky. And today I was going to talk to you a little bit about the Sigma Logic product. Um, first, that's me. And second, this is part of a uh, hashtag Skywa at home. Uh, check it out. Uh, I've seen some really cool stuff uh, up on YouTube already. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a product overview. I'll walk through the configuration software uh, that you use to get the amplifier set up, and then I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, product usage within RS Logics. So what is Sigma Logic? Sigma Logic is a uh, amplifier series that we offer built on our standard Sigma series of servo amplifiers. So uh, with Sigma series amplifiers, we're at Sigma seven currently. You're you're going to get things like innovative and flexible tuning algorithms. Um, you know, tuning less mode, uh, which allows us to run up to a 30 to one inertia ratios out of the box without tuning. And that mode actually does adapt to changing loads as well. Um, you get flexible uh, algorithms, uh, things, advanced settings like uh, friction compensation, vibration reduction, that sort of thing. So we've got a, a really, really high performing servo amplifier and motor product. And as an added benefit here, you get the ability to program the motion and the application within RS Logics. So um, another couple points here, we, we do offer this in a power range of 50 watts all the way up to 15 kilowatts. So 100, 200, 400 volt AC input. Um, there is a single configuration tool that you use one time uh, called Logic Works to get everything set up. And then from that point, again, this is an Ethernet IP ready product and we offer a complete library of add-on instructions. So all of the programming itself is done within uh, RS Logics, which, you know, for the end users and the maintenance staffs out there and, and people that might specify that they want to do all the programming in Rockwell, this is our solution for that. Um, Cool thing here is you get to run any of the Yaskawa motor products, basically. So rotary motors, uh, direct drive motors, uh, indexing tables, rotary dials, things like that. All of our linear motor products, so super high speed, uh, high performance, uh, high, uh, very, very accurate positioning, that sort of thing. And then in October, I, I want to say October of 2019, uh, we launched Sigma Track 2, which is a complete linear stage. Uh, so this bolts on to the machine, uses our linear motor technology, uh, plug it into the amplifier and you get motion, linear motion right out of the box. So let's talk a little bit about the configuration tool itself. This is called LogicWorks. Uh, very, very simple, uh, straightforward program to use. Uh, it's tab based uh, and within each tab, there's a, there's, there's sub, sub tabs, let's call it. So on the connection side, first thing to do is get connected to the drive. You have the option to receive a uh, the parameters from the, the drive amplifier, or at the end, after everything's configured and you're happy with, with what you've done within LogicWorks, you can send this down to the Sigma Logic Axis. And at that point, all the programming is then switched over and done in, in RS Logics. So no programming in this program. It's it's just a it's just a setup utility to make sure the units are scaled appropriately, everything's set up to work with the with the uh, Compact or Control Logics PLC. So Ethernet settings, pretty straightforward there. Uh, IP and subnet, get that set up, you're good to go. Uh, units is kind of an important one in that you're going to define, you know, the motor, any gear reducer, transmission, couplings, pulleys, that sort of thing. The load, uh, if it's a ball screw, for instance, you'll you know set the feed constant to you know how far the ball screw travels uh, for every revolution of the output shaft connected to the ball screw, that sort of thing. Um, so you get that all set up, uh, move over to options. This is kind of a scaled down version of amplifier parameters, I'll say. So things like torque limits, um, what your position complete window is, uh, tuning. So in this case, you know, a simple selection of the rigidity level of the load and a simple selection of the load level. And that's basically it. That's, that's all you need to select uh, to get the, to get the access tuned. Another option on the options tab is, you know, all of the Escawa motors are high resolution, absolute encoder feedback. So 24 bit, 16 million plus pulses per revolution, but you can run them as incremental uh, if you'd like. So this, tab gives you kind of the ability to set those type of things up. From there, uh, 
the next the next tab up at the top that you'll see is the sequence tab. And this is kind of a, a cool feature in that this amplifier can actually also be used as a standard indexer. So the commands are initiated and available uh, within RS logics. However, the events to start the sequence can be tied to physical I.O. or other events uh, other than doing all the, of the sequencing over Ethernet IP. So a good example here would be maybe a rotary table uh, where you needed high performance and the ability to customize the index moves, but maybe the sequence repeated and you wanted to do it as fast as possible. So instead of having latency and different things like that that you might deal with on an Ethernet IP network, this sequence table allows you to string a sequence of events and moves together and then trigger them from real world IO. So you, you kind of get away from any of the latency stuff uh, that, that you'd have. Uh, test run, pretty self-explanatory. You can turn the servo on, jog it in reverse or forward, set the XL, decel, and speeds. This is a good way to make sure that the motor's moving, that your units are set up correctly, uh, that you went through on the uh, configuration tab. Uh, it does allow you to do you know, target position moves, and you can also set uh, the motor position to zero here and, and just kind of you know, practice, make sure the moves are happening appropriately and that sort of thing. So uh, you're done with that. The last tab is monitor, it shows you the active and, and, and history of the alarms on the axis. Um, there is a sequence monitor, which is really nice if you are running this as an indexer, it show you step by step how the sequences are progressing, that sort of thing. And then lastly, there's a uh, status and IO tab that'll show you exactly what it, it sounds like it will. So um, actual positions, commanded positions, the speeds, any of the IO on the drive, any of the sequence flags, what their states are, that sort of thing. So you get all the way done with this. Um, you hit the send button, you send all this configuration down to the signal logic axis. And from there, you're into RS logics. So in RS logics, um, very straightforward to set up. Uh, first step is under the IO configuration, you add the signal logic axis as an Ethernet module. Uh, we have a step-by-step -step instruction that shows you what to set the connection parameters to, things like that. Uh, you get this set up, give it an IP address, set the connection parameters. Uh, and then step two would be import the AOIs. So for any of the Rockwell uh, folks uh, with familiarity with RS logics, our library of add-on instructions uh, imports here. You can see, you know, for instance, MAJ motion axis jog uh, within Rockwell is the same exact nomenclature other than we append underscore Yaskala to the end of it. Okay. Uh, so pretty straightforward. So get the signal logic axis configured as a module, import the AOIs, and from there, you're programming fully in RS logics. So we do have one special function block, uh, AOI, called MCFG. Uh, this is kind of a watchdog between our signal logic axis and the PLC. So there's a heartbeat uh, that's exchanged back and forth. This will show you status of the axis. It also sets up all of the variables as tags for use within the RS Logics programming environment. So as you can see here, MCFG underscore one dot servo alarm code, for instance, right? So it'll it'll give you everything you need from the drive, from the signal logic axis for use within your RS Logics uh, program. So servo ready, servo on, is there an alarm? Is there a warning? Any and all of the things you would need from the driver accessible via programming tags. Uh, from there, uh, you know, standard uh, motion uh, function blocks. So, you know, example here is a motion axis move. You know, you set incremental or absolute, the position, the speed, Excel, decel. You can see it's named MAM underscore Yaskawa. One nice feature I'll say is that our help file is very detailed, uh, shows you information about the AOI. And then brings up similar to what you'd see in our RS Logics environment with Rockwell uh, function blocks, you know, data types, uh, what the usage is, the descriptions, shows you how really uh, to tie these different uh, parameters to the AOI for use within your program. All right, so uh, to wrap it up, you know, in summary, Sigma Logic is a really, really high performance product that you get to program within RS Logic if it, Logics if that's what is needed for the application. Uh, very large power range, 50 watts to 15 kilowatts, able to run all of the Escala motor products. And your programmers or your end users, uh, if you're an OEM, 
don't have to learn anything new. They're still programming within RS Logics. We just configure it once with the LogicWorks program. Uh, complete support, 1-800-JASCAWA, 24-7, or with the field teams, uh, regional motion engineers, that sort of thing. Um, and then we do have online learning modules available for free. I'll include some links in the, in the video content. They're going to be much better than this video. <laughs> this is really meant more as an overview than anything else. Um, and then I've got some links here for flyers, model numbers, where you get logic works, where you get the add-on instructions, uh, and then Sigma Win Plus version 7, which is our sort of complete access configuration tool. Um, you can use that to set up the drive if you've got your Scala familiarity and then you just pull the parameters from Sigma Win Plus into LogicWorks to, to do that. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, appreciate everyone's time. Have a great day.